Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Golden Gloves Chat Show. With me is the IBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Kevin Arena. Kevin, we're still okay. doing the elbow yeah, shakes. Elbow. We'll be arguing each other soon, <laughs> hopefully sooner than later. Um, welcome, it's nice to have you as a guest again. It's been a long time. Kevin, uh, I call you the Golden Boy of Golden Gloves. Uh, I'm sure you, uh, Rodney Berman, agrees with me on that. Firstly, how's life treating you? You're looking in great shape as always. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Obviously, we've had to get through this uh, tough time of COVID. But life's treating me well. I cannot complain. I just look forward to getting back into the ring. But all in all, I'm healthy and that's all that matters. Well, you're looking, you're looking fantastic. Is the training going well again? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping in good, decent shape. You know, I try not to let, my, let myself go. I, as we're all aware, I had shoulder surgery a couple of mm. months ago and, and that's healing up well. So it's just about uh, maintaining now. As soon as I get that fight date, tune up, fight continue winning in the white house okay you're looking good <laughs> yeah I'm, i mean i'm in decent shape i yes. always walk around 102 kilos for the american 102. yeah 225 yeah. pounds I, mean, I walk around at a heavyweight weight yes. and not out of shape yes. so i do do a big cut to get down to cruiserweights you know let's see where we go with cruiserweight try and unify the division as best we can and then i'll be moving up to heavyweight i mean i'm a i'm not a small cruiserweight and and making weight is very disciplined for me and it's a great sacrifice but there comes a time where you can't do it anymore and I will have to go up to heavyweight. As much as Rodney says to me I won't, <laughs> he's going to promote me at heavyweight. And, and uh, after I've done all I can at cruiserweight. Well, we look forward to that as well. But you're talking cruiserweight at the moment, you're the cruiserweight champion. And you're a good champion. Kevin, let's Thank talk you. a little bit about your, your private life. Uh, I see on, on Facebook and Instagram, whatever it is all the time. You're flying helicopters. Yeah. I love helicopters as well. Tell us about that. No, it's cool. So I've, I realized, you know, before, uh, sorry, just before my safari fight, I started with my pilot's license, you know, flying twice a week, doing the theoretical exams, and, and I just kept chipping away at the block. When lockdown hit, then I was like, let's do it now. Study hard. As soon as lockdown opened up after that level five, I started smashing the hours and then completing my exams. And about two weeks ago, I qualified as a, as a, with my PPR as a helicopter pilot. And yeah, now it's about logging up the hours in my yes. spare time, flying as much as I can for free, no remuneration, just logging those hours. Like tomorrow, I've got to fly to the Midlands. That's four hours, two hours there and back. So awesome. logging hours to my name. Uh, because there is life after boxing, I have a goal, I have a plan, <laughs> but I'm focused on my boxing career. But I think a lot of fighters don't realize you need to think about life after boxing whilst you're boxing and use it to benefit you and your network. So the idea of cruiserweight champion of the world is a qualified pilot as well to fly helicopters. You can call me captain. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> captain Arena. Right, let's talk about your career. As I said, IBO champion, a very credible organization and a good organization. You're obviously looking to expand and to unify titles be before you become a heavyweight, let's say? Most definitely, Brian. I want to do everything that I can in the cruiserweight division. It's a great division. The, the division is booming if you look at the top 10 in the world because mm. you've got to look at the guys in the top 10. I'm going to go through them quickly. You've got uh, Dorticus, Bradus, Glowaki, Makabu, myself, Mchunu, uh, Lawrence Akoli, to name a few. They're all good fighters. Besides Usyk has just gone up to heavyweight. Everyone there is a credible global international level fighter so there's great fighters there's great fights to be made you got your murray's your upper ties who are on the fringes so these are all big fights that could be made and it's just a matter of time timing and and the correct uh, numbers yes and then the fights will happen so i'm very positive and optimistic i mean this is boxing anything yeah. can happen you've got to be ready all the time when it happens i'm there to show the world on an international level fantastic Kevin. well like you said you mentioned the australian uh, Jai Opatai yeah. as well. He's 19 and 0. Uh, Berman has spoken about him. There's been talks about that. So that's a fight that could happen. There, there, there's quite a few possibilities. Then Ryan Murray looks like yeah. that will be, be become a good possibility for the WBA title. He's 29 and 1. Have you seen much of uh, Ryan Murray? I've seen a lot of Ryan Murray. Um, we're always in talks to make that fight for the WBA World Championship, not the Super Championship, the World Championship. Um, we're just waiting for Shimonov uh, to either vacate or I'm not sure what's happening there because he hasn't defended it for a very long time. He may be stripped as well. Yes. So then it becomes a vacant belt and myself and Mary will challenge for it because he's one and I'm mandatory two. Correct. Um, he's a good fighter, 29-1. Opatai is also a good fighter. Olympian, 19 and Australian, tall Samoan fighter. Now, so they've they got good boxing, uh, their background. Uh, Joseph Parker, he's a Samoan. Yes. Samoan descent. Um, so they're good fighters. Um, I'm not sure if I'm willing to go to Australia for an eliminator. For a world title five, most definitely, but for an eliminator, it's got to be here yeah, in my hometown. 
um, regarding the WBA being a world title. That's kind of the route I feel is the better route for me because it's a world title fight, mm. either in Belgium or here, and it will make more sense for my career right now. Both good fighters, both guys who need yeah. to be respected, and both fighters who I'll beat to go on to achieve greatness. Well, we look forward to that. Uh, whoever comes up first, uh, we know you'll be ready to beat them. The COVID-19 obviously has thrown us yeah. all out the water for yeah. you poor boxers. Uh, 2020 is almost here, written off. So 2021, we look forward to a big sure. year with Kevin Arena, the IBA Cruiserweight Champion, and of course to, to fight the other big names. Kevin, uh, let me ask you about uh, currently now, we've got the 10th of October at Empress Palace for the mm. big Golden Glove show. We've got the Ford War, one of your stable mates is fighting. Uh, Boyd Allen. How do you see the fight with Boyd Allen and, and Brandon Tyson? A uh, very good fight. I think it's going to be a very different fight to the first one that they had. Um, Brandon, I think, has come on, come along a lot more. He's doing well under Damien Durant. Um, he's got a lot of confidence in, in his style now, and he's a good boxer. You know, we saw him lose to Nkululeko Matlongu, who's a warhorse, mm. and I think that was a bit early for Brandon. So I do believe he's come on now. But Boyd's got Peter as his trainer now, who's going to refine his skills and. Boyd's also got a lot of experience in the MMA game and he's very sneaky if people don't realize he's a very awkward fighter, yeah. very hard to hit. It's a great fight. It's a great final. I mean, two better guys couldn't have met in the final. I'm going to stick my neck out and I'm go with Boyd because he's very awkward and he's fought Brandon before, but it's not going to be an easy fight. Brandon's tough a fight. tough competitor. He's a good fighter. You know, these, these fights go either way, but I must side with my teammate because that's what loyalty is about. You side with your teammates. But it's going to be a tough fight for both of them and for Boyd. Brandon's a tough competitor. Damien's a good trainer. Peter's a good trainer. The, may the best man win. Thanks, Kevin. It's a good fight, like you say. Yeah. And it's the 10th of October at Empress Palace. It will be live on Supersport, your world of champions. And then there's another fight on the undercard as well in your division. Mm. Chris Thompson fighting Akani Puzzi. Uh, it will be the third time. Uh, Chris is obviously hoping for third time. Lucky. Really? Um, did well, they fight three times, twice? They fought twice before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Chris lost on points in a, in a close fight in a six-rounder. Okay. And then was stopped in a second fight. Well, we have that one, yeah. So he's hopefully uh, for, hoping for a third time lucky, as I said. Uh, he said it was early on, in, early on in his career, and uh, he's looking to, to get a win. How do you see that fight going? Definitely. You know, Akani Puzzi is the, the fighter with a better pedigree, having had amateur experience. But Chris Thompson had no amateur experience like myself i'm not sure how many fights he's had nice still an early part of his career uh, as a young fighter he needs to make it on a local level um he works really hard that i do know about the guy he works hard he's a tough competitor he's got lots of heart akani puzi is a good boxer he's got nice skills you got to side with your teammate like i said you know i want chris to win purely based he's part of team smith Hmm. Um, it's going to be a difficult fight purely because Akani Puzi is a nice boxer. Yeah, he's, he's, a boxer. He's, he's a good technician. He, he moves nicely in the ring. But Chris knows what he has to do to make the to to win, and I hope he does that. And, and I wish him all the best. But that's a good fight. I mean, hmm. it's a, that's kind of like a fight you would two guys you would want to meet in the final, you know. But the fact that it's a it's a, it's a starting fight for the competition shows that it's nice for the local guys may the best man win and then whoever it is in the final against i think Lebo it, or keaton. it's keaton, keaton gums mm. that is my next question keaton gums and Lebo moshita they fought once before with, with keaton getting the decision uh, how do you see that fight going i know keaton uh, Lebo, Lebo got the decision hey? uh, Lebo got the yeah, decision yeah. and and it was a close fight could, could have gone either way and how do you see the fight going? Obviously, Keaton is a stable mate. Sure. Well. Look, I think Lebo did what he had to do to win in that first fight. I mean, he surprised me. I was in the change room. I was fighting that night. And he, he really, he boxed like he needed to, to win. And I always say to everybody, you need to do what you have to do to win. Nothing else matters. And it's going to go down on his record as a win. I have seen a change in Keaton. Um, I've sparred him a couple of times uh, for some of my fights. And Keaton's a strong guy. He's got a nice, decent right hand. He's a strong guy. And I've seen a change in his attitude. So... With this, when I say attitude, he never had a bad attitude, but what I mean is in his attitude as a fighter. He's hungry now, and I believe he really wants to win. And he's got to implement that game plan against Lebo, who's a fast guy. He's a slick, light, he's a light heavyweight. He's not a big cruiserweight, but he's done well at cruiserweight now. And um, Keaton's got to take the fight to him, and I'm going to back my boy Keaton. He's from my gym, and that's the way I go. But it's a good fight, and, and Keaton's got a point to prove, and so does Lebo. Lebo's got a point to prove to say it wasn't a fluke win. Mm. Keaton's got a point to prove to say it was a fluke win and I'm going to beat you so it's a good fight and like I said whoever's in the final there it's good for local the local guys you know when I say the local guys the guys who aren't on an international level like myself Tabiso and Lunga Makabu let's see how they go and and maybe these guys will go on in the direction of either one of us but 
It's a nice local competition. Fantastic. Well, there you heard it from the IBO Cruiserweight champion of the world himself, Kevin Arena. Kevin, thank you thank for you, being a great guest once again. From me, from Brian Mitchell, from the Golden Gloves Chat Show. We'll speak to you soon.